Hello and welcome to Psych 100 General Psychology. I'm Dr. Larry Hatcher. I'll be your instructor for this class and you will enjoy Psych 100 General Psychology because it is all about you. Uh, why do you feel the way that you feel about certain issues and certain aspects of your life? Why do you behave the way that you behave? Are there more effective versus less effective ways of raising our children so that they'll be self-confident and able to take care of themselves in life? Are there ways that we can better organize society so that people are more willing to do pro-social things like donate blood and donate organs? Those are the kinds of things that general psychology is all about. Uh, if you're like most students, you'll enjoy this class very much. Uh, right now, we're in what I call chapter zero, which means we're not in any real chapters yet. This is the module where I will talk about general orientation, what you can expect in the class, and ultimately, I'm going to talk about the course syllabus. That might be in a separate video. Uh, so, outline for what I'm going to talk about today. General overview of the course, what are the required textbooks that you'll need to have, classroom policies, what are your responsibilities, how do I teach this class in general, how you use the study guides I'll provide for you, and eventually we'll talk about the course syllabus. Yes, we will stay for the entire session today. That's what I normally tell my students during a semester when we're meeting face-to-face. -face. This particular semester, we're not meeting face-to-face -face during the first week, but we will be meeting face-to-face -face starting week two and, and after that. Uh, about me, i like to begin by saying a few things about Larry Hatcher. Uh, I'm full-time faculty member in the psychology department here at Saginaw Valley State University. I got my PhD in industrial and organizational psychology from Bowling Green State University in 1983. Uh, that makes me an applied psychologist and that's kind of a different orientation than some of the other faculty members might bring to the course. I got my PhD in 83, spent a year working for a consulting institute that did industrial psychology type work. I taught for 12 years at Winthrop University in South Carolina. I've been here at SVSU since 1996, and I very much like being here at SVSU. I particularly like teaching this class, uh, Psych 100. I teach a couple of sections of Psych 100 just about every academic semester. Speaking of our class and the way that I teach it, required texts for this class. Uh, the main required text is this. R. H. Ettinger's textbook, Psychology, the Science of Behavior. Uh, you will purchase this Ettinger psychology textbook at the SVSU bookstore, at Amazon.com, or wherever you choose to purchase uh, the textbook. Many of you have probably already purchased the textbook. The other item we'll use in this class is Hatcher's Instructor's Packet for Psych 100. Uh, that's a collection of handouts, discussion exercises, drawings that I've done to illustrate various concepts. Uh, you don't need to buy that at the bookstore. I used to have them uh, photocopy it and sell it at the bookstore. These days, I just created a PDF of it, and I will make that uh, Psych 100 instructor's packet available to you as a free download at Canvas Modules. If it's not available today, it will be available within the next week or two. Uh, do bring the packet with you to every class meeting. That means make sure you've got it on your laptop so you can open up the documents in the instructor's packet for Psych 100 anytime uh, we need to work with a discussion exercise or something like that. Regarding the Edinger textbook, you don't necessarily need to bring that with you to class meetings. Uh, there'll be some days that we will have uh, multiple choice quizzes during class time. Some students like to bring their Edinger textbook with them at that time, either so they can use it for review purposes before the test or during the test. Yes, my multiple choice quizzes are open book, open note. So I don't require that you bring the Edinger textbook, but a lot of the students like to bring the Edinger textbook with them to class meetings. Uh, among the optional resources for this class, if you want, 
you can go to bvtlab.com and create an account there. BVT is the publisher that publishes the Edinburgh textbook. Uh, they make it possible for people that purchase the book to create an online account for them. If you have an online account, it makes it uh, possible for you to access supplementary online resources, things like online flashcards, practice questions, and such. Creating an online account at BVT Lab is totally optional. Uh, we will not have any activities in this class which require that you use those supplementary materials. I've had some students that have created the accounts and not very many of them have said they found it terribly effective, uh, but that's up to you as to whether you want to create it. Uh, I don't require it and there won't be any activities in class where you need to have that online account. Well, then how do I teach Psych 100? Uh, classroom policies. As you know, during this time of COVID-19, there will be one day of the week that's in your, that is your in-person day and another day of the week that is your online day. Uh, if it's your in-person day, then you'll actually physically come to campus and come to the classroom. Uh, I want you to choose your permanent seat in the classroom relatively soon. I don't take attendance, uh, but I do want you to choose a seat and within the next couple of weeks and stay in that seat all semester long because at some point I'll start learning your names and that's easier to do if you stay in the same seat all semester long. Uh, make a note to yourself of uh, which row you're in, what your seat number is, so you can stay in that seat all semester long. Uh, I lecture, we do small group discussion exercises during class meetings. About halfway through a given class meeting, I'll give you a short break. Give you a little five minute break halfway through. In addition to that, feel free to step out of the room anytime you need to step out of the room. Uh, while you're here in classroom, please do turn off your cell phones. Please do not sleep. Please do not talk so loudly that you're distracting me or any of the other students. While you're here in the classroom, you'll find that I am pretty easily distracted. And if I can hear you in a side conversation, that'll make me lose my place. So if you just got to talk to your neighbor, please whisper quiet like so you're not distracting anyone. Regarding Psych 100, the way that I teach it, there's good news and bad news. Mostly good news, I think. Uh, the good news about Psych 100 is that you will enjoy it. Just about every chapter in the book will touch on some aspect of psychology that's relevant to you and your life and people that are in your life. The vast majority of students enjoy the class very much. Bad news about Psych 100 is it is more difficult than it looks. Psych 100 can have kind of a bad reputation on campus in that some students do not pass it. Let me show you grade distribution for a group of students that I had about nine years ago. Uh, now this is old, but grades these days are not terribly different than they were in sections that I taught eight, nine, ten years ago. In fall of 2011, I was teaching two sections of the class. Uh, I do give pluses and minuses in this class in the ways that uh, the university allows us to do that. Uh, a minus, B plus, and so forth. If you ignore the pluses and the minuses, in that semester, about 34% uh, percent of my students got an A or an A minus. 23% got some kind of a B, B plus, B, B minus. 19% got some kind of a C. 14% got a D, 11% got an F. Now, that's mostly good news when we look at this grade distribution. You'll see that most of the students got good grades in this class. The bad news is it is still possible to fail this class. In a typical semester, I'll have somewhere around 10 to 15% of the students get an F. There are things that I do that makes it more likely you'll be in the A and B group and less likely in the F group. I will talk about that as we go through this introductory session. Which brings me to your primary, your primary responsibilities for this class. Do attend each class meeting, uh, either in person if it's your in-person day, or online using Echo 360 if it is not your in-person day. Uh, do look at the instructions in the Canvas modules section. To do this, and by the way, uh, Canvas modules, I assume that many of you have experience with this concept of Canvas modules might be new to some of you, so I thought I would demonstrate what Canvas modules are all about. 
In order to get into Canvas modules, you'll log into Canvas using your SVSU username and ID. Uh, when you log into Canvas, there'll be a listing of the courses that you're enrolled in. Uh, your listing will not look like these. These are the courses that I'm teaching this semester. Let's imagine that you're enrolled in Psych 100, the 1230 class, and the uh, icon for your class looks like this. Uh, you click that icon. It takes you to the home page for Canvas. On the left side of Canvas is a list of tools within Canvas, things like announcements, modules, quizzes, grades, and such. Uh, on a typical day, the first thing that you will want to do when you're in Canvas and you're in Psych 100 for Canvas, uh, on the left side, select Modules. That will take you to the modules that I have set up for our section of Canvas. Uh, now again, yours won't necessarily look like this. This is what my modules look like. Uh, the first one in this class is Meet Your Instructor. And then we come to the module for the week of January 11. Uh, obviously, I'll have a separate module for each week of the semester. Sometimes I'll have a separate module for each class meeting of the semester. Uh, the week of January 11 involves chapter syllabus and orientation. And we have a bunch of pages there. You click this to download a document that summarizes uh, to open up a document that summarizes the overview and task list. What are the things that I want you to do in working through this module? Let's go ahead and click it and see what it says. Uh, step one, overview and task list. Tell you what to expect in the current module. In a typical unit, there'll be a task list of things that I want you to do for that module. For now, let's go back to the modules. Um, for the current module, there is a page headed Syllabus and Study Guide. You click that and you'll see that there's a syllabus. If you click this link, that allows you to download the syllabus to the class. If you click this link, it allows you to download the Syllabus Quiz Study Guide. Study Guide that will help you to prepare for the Syllabus Quiz that you're going to take uh, before long. So those are examples of a couple of pages in Canvas modules. All semester long, you'll hear me say, go to Canvas modules and download such and such. That is what I am talking about. Uh, going back to today's overview of what to expect in our class. Um, on a given day, one of the first things you'll want to do is go to Canvas, go to the modules, um, go to the module for the current week or the current day, and see what kinds of tasks and activities and downloads I have for you there. From time to time, check your email and look for announcements from me in your email. Uh, if something important is coming up, I will usually send you an email telling you so. If something has been changed in the class, I'll send you an email saying so. So think in terms of Canvas modules, think in terms of Canvas emails. Uh, if you miss an email for whatever reason, you can always log into Canvas and go to the Canvas announcement section. And you'll see the same emails there. Okay, we're about 13 minutes into this video. This is probably a good place for me to break off this video. I have more to say about what you can expect in this class. The next topic is going to be how I teach this class. We'll pick that up with the next part of this video series.